come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Hello. Hey, thanks. We're a movie review podcast. Hey, we come at, we record every week. One day or another. One every week. Another. <laughs> uh, we release an episode every week. How about that? <laughs> and then we uh, we watch a movie. We do. We, we talk about a movie. We do. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. We hope uh, that if you do enjoy it, please go over to uh, iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or TuneIn or wherever you found us. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, or the star rating. Give us a review. Why not? Just we'll the, read just it. Just the first star. That's all. That's all. <laughs> uh, but all of that stuff makes us uh, more visible to other like-minded folks like you. Welcome to the family. So, uh, who are... These internet radio superstars. Sean. Allie. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Can we do it fast enough where it's just all one word? And so <laughs> so we just <laughs> shout it at the same time. I think we tried it at one point just to go around as fast as we could. As long as they can pick us all They up. know who we are. Uh, so tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin, what did we watch tonight? We watched the fourth in a series of movies. Ooh. I took it from you, Sean, just jumping right into the middle of a, a series. Yeah, just go for it. Yeah. Like, fuck it. So Everyone we, else can do the research and catch up. We went with, uh, it's a movie called Lone Wolf and Cub. Mm-hmm. It's the fourth movie called Baby Cart in Peril. Baby Cart in Peril. Now, okay. Okay, so some of you... Let's do some history on this. Maybe fans of a movie called Shogun Assassin. And who wouldn't be? We covered Shogun Assassin in the early days of the Saturday Night Freak Show. We did. You don't have to go back and listen to that episode because... We'll cover it all again tonight? Yeah, I was going to say, we made a lot of factual uh, errors on oh, that we? episode. That, yeah, Uh-oh. I went back and listened to it. I'm like, ooh. Uh, uh. Oh, all right. Well, as long as we're <laughs> You know, it could get lost. <laughs> we've updated our information. Yeah. We've updated the uh-huh. the media in which we're viewing it on. That's right. And our, our current uh, Saturday Night Freak Show lineup is also updated. Well, you were here for it. Sean I was, was here for, for Shogun the, Assassin. Uh, the last one. You remember Shogun Assassin? I do. I remember because yeah, the fight at I've the end with the three too. dudes and the, the weapons they have, and the dude's got the Wolverine claws and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Didn't, guys with wh- the big the, wicker hats. Yeah. yeah. Who's the guy who died? What did he say when he died? It was something fucking funny. It was like, uh, I always knew that when oh, hear the, hear the whistling yeah the oh, whistling yeah. in your ears of your blood yes i yeah. never thought it would be mine. <laughs> yes i okay it's there's a, a scene i really remember from the series i'm pretty sure it's from shogun assassin tell me if i'm wrong where um the bad guys are holding the titular cub over a well and yeah. the kid drops his shoe mm-hmm. so that it oh, falls right. down into the water so that his dad knows how much time he has yes. before the kid hits the ground That's and he true. catches a, the rope and like the top of his head is like a little wet so he just had to yeah it was i remember such a fucking that That's scene. Great. I'm like, that's so fucking cool. I remember cool. that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Shogun Assassin's what? fucking cool. It is. <laughs> well, it's the thing. It's like the, the guy uh, in the... Well, okay. Well, first of all, so Shogun Assassin was... Uh, there was a, an American producer who was a fan of the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, mm-hmm. which were there were six of them made between 1972 and 1973. Uh, mm-hmm. In 1980, the American producer released a version of the first two movies cut together so it was about 11 minutes of the first movie called sword of vengeance Mm -hmm. and most of the movie the second movie which is called baby cart in the river sticks at the river sticks at the river sticks Mm -hmm. which i think is still probably the best of the lone wolf and cub movies so Mm -hmm. um so uh where was i gonna go i feel like from my memory there's a lot more baby cart action in that movie too I remember in, a lot more of the dramatic sword pulling out, like in the cart and stuff like that. Not yeah. so much the gun stuff. But no, like, no, this the is the first is time. I, this yeah, I was, I was like, saying, I don't remember any gun I've stuff. I've seen the gun yeah. one. I'm because I, I was surprised. And I'm like, the oh, darts shit. too. Mm-hmm. It's got guns on that shit. Yeah, this baby cart's like the fucking Batmobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's wonderful. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the handles are just like the handles of swords, and you just pull them out yeah, and eat them. It's awesome. And then, and then, what, Diagoro? Daigoro. Daigoro yeah, can like hit a fucking switch and just be like, <laughs> yeah. that kid's awesome. So I know, because he... and I love that he, I love that he has the kid have control over it. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's not on the handle where he can do it. He no. has the kid do it. Yeah, because that, that happens the kid's in, legit, uh, though. Yeah. in Shogun He's, Assassin or yeah. uh, a baby cart. And he like hits a button and impales a couple of guys. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it comes up the sides. swords yeah, that yeah, come yeah. out yeah. Uh, the wheels. And, like, yeah. Yes, you know like how the, like in Greece yeah. they had the spikes on the oh, wheels? Yeah. It's like that. It's like that kid hits a button and those That's spikes awesome. come out. It's, yeah, so in the previous, because cool. this is my first Lone Wolf and Cub movie. So in the previous movies, 
the kid really does kill a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't really kill anyone in this. Mm. He, not he's, really. Compared to the previous movies, he's kind of inactive, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, he helps. He's, I think he's got he many helps. assists. Yeah. This. He doesn't actually like. You see him toss that fucking thing up. He's like, Fwah! yeah. Take it dead. Yeah. No, he's got his moments, but he doesn't really kill anybody. Right. I mean, not yeah. like a samurai swordsman or anything. He's no, not he's around. not stabbing people. I wonder yeah. if there. Well, because the be... one, the one guy. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. The one guy. He's he's got that that scene where he's talking about the kids got the. The death death life in his eyes yeah, or whatever. Death, the death life eyes. Basically, death he's life seen eyes. shit. Right. Yeah. Right. He's, he's, like, saying, he's seen some shit. He's, some he shit. literally says, like, those are the eyes of someone that's killed hundreds of people. Hundreds yeah. of people. And I'm like, this kid isn't killing anybody. But in the previous movies, he oh, does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Because, like, it's kind of just like him and his dad against the world sort of thing. Sure, yeah. yeah. I got that. Yeah, this kid's yeah. an accomplice. Yeah. yeah. I think he's almost he's more an badass. accomplice than, I mean, because than an active, well, I mean, he's an active participant and then he hits the buttons and people die as a result his attitude is very much though like you're making me do this to you like that's his attitude they're like right. I don't want to do this this was your decision <laughs> yeah. and this is yeah. what you get yeah, yeah. and I, we don't know who the actor is did you look this oh, up for the, the little kid I no, mean I on to. this uh, set that uh, Criterion put out uh, which collects all Akihiro the Akihiro Tamikawa there's no interviews with him, unfortunately. Like as a grown man, I'd love oh, to hear. Like, I would like, love to yeah. know <laughs> what was it like about those two show. years? Because did guess, you know he were killing people? Yeah, he's well, like, he oh, I knew. He, he had to. Oh, yeah, he was through, he like, was a killing field. No, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's yeah. an active part. I, I think one of the bigger differences too between these movies and um, Shogun Assassin is that like Shogun Assassin has the voiceover from the kid's perspective throughout the whole movie. Yeah, like talking about what his dad's doing and why he's doing it, and mm-hmm. like that actually adds a lot to the movie when you have that. Like because it gives you like the little more of uh, like the plot coherence mm-hmm. as opposed it like kind of knits all these different scenes together I mean Shogun Assassin changes a certain amount of the plot you know to try and make it into one uh, story right. but even then it ends on a cliffhanger mm-hmm. which I remember uh, became like a thing on the, when we watched right. it for the freak show it was like what there's no ending to this movie <laughs> you know because but, there's four more uh, yeah well <laughs> Bad news. There's no ending to the last movie. Is there not? I was going to ask that. Does no. this resolve I mean, it, itself it at any of, point? It kind of feels appropriate, though. Like they would just go on forever. But there yeah. was Wandering an ending. The so did the Americans make up an ending? No, it's uh, it's it's actually based on a comic Fucking book, Americans. Uh, a manga, oh, yeah. right, if you will, manga. A Japanese manga. Um, and apparently, <laughs> as the movies were being made, the comic wasn't finished yet. Oh, right? like a Game of Thrones situation. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So there were enough uh, stories that they can make. I think like at least the first four or maybe five uh, movies are based on the comic. And then uh, there was a problem after the sixth movie. Uh, the star of this, his name is uh, Thomas Saburo Wakayama. His, uh, I guess, they started making a, a, a Lone Wolf and Cub TV show. Because the Japanese would do this for some reason. Like, they would have, like, a feature film going on and also do, like, a TV series at the same time. And they recast the part. And he and he was like, it's my fucking part. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm, if you're recasting it for TV, then I'm done. I'm just stopping right here. It's like, fuck it. Yeah. So, I would do that. In theory, there could have been 26 of these movies, but Oof. he quit. Okay. Maybe that's for the better, though. I think you it's know? for the yeah. right. We've we only recently learned this. It's like maybe less is a, is more because we used to you know just play this shit out for Hollywood is twenty six episodes of everything. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. well, I said twenty six episodes because I've got the copy here. But his right. brother is a guy named Shintaro Katsu, and he famously played a character called Zatoichi. Zatoichi is the blind swordsman, right? Yes. Uh, he's um, like a masseur who wanders around Japan. He's kind of a goofier character <laughs> than uh, than Lone Wolf, and but he's like an excellent, you know, swordsman. Can you know cut people down like crazy? And he did twenty six episodes and a TV series of the Zatoichi movies Jesus. in the seventies and eighties. Then uh, that's a lot. I think there was a Rutger Hauer movie called Blind Fury, which was a remake of one of the Zatoichi movies. Oh yeah, where Rutger Hauer played a blind swordsman in America in like the nineties. Jesus, hmm. that's pretty show right. material right there. Well, yeah, I was say be. I want to see that. <laughs> that might be. <laughs> um, so the general idea, the the concept of the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, uh, and Holly, here's a little bit of. I mean, there's mm-hmm. backstory here. In the film you just watched, right. but the idea being that uh, Ido Igami mm-hmm. is the uh, Shogun's executioner, mm-hmm. 
which is a weird position to have, I guess, in this uh, feudal Japan, uh, because everybody has to, if you dishonor yourself, you have to commit uh, seppuku, or yeah. is right. it Harry Carey? Yeah, se- well, they seppuku. mentioned both in this, yeah, seppuku, yeah. Harry Carey. I don't know the difference or sameness that is involved it's in some that. kind of self-suicide? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it is. Ritual. Well, one, Falling yeah, you on your sword, your, if you, you will. You run yourself through and yeah. everything, yeah. It looks very painful. Very. Yeah. But apparently, before you are done cutting your guts out, mm-hmm. your dad will chop your head off. The yeah. executioner chops your head off. Sure. And so, this guy, uh, our eventual lone wolf, was the uh, shogun's executioner, a, a high position mm-hmm. in, yes. the, uh, in the in the uh, whatever the, the government the structure of of that. So this is so this is the first time we see how he got that position. Yes, okay. that's new to this movie. Right. There's a flashback here that kind of like shows how this conflict actually started between the uh, lone wolf and uh, this other, uh, the wizened old, uh, you know, gray beard, yeah. Retsu, <laughs> Retsudo Yagyu, whatever. He's the, the main antagonist. We apologize to everyone <laughs> whose name we're yeah. going to butcher in this show. Well, that guy is the main antagonist of right. all the, the films. Mm-hmm. And that's so you're kind of always waiting for, like, they're eventually going to meet and they're going to have, the, you know, their final confrontation. Mm-hmm. I guess in the comic that at the end they kill each other and die. Oh. Uh, and we know out. this is the era oh. of the Shogun. So do we know what particular time frame this is? The Edo era in the Japan. The Edo era. Okay. I don't know when that is. There's an Edo era? The Edo era. Okay. I only know that because it's on the back of the box. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff we only know because it's on the back of the box. Yeah. I believe it's like 16th century Japan. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. So. That's a good book. The back of the box. Yeah. <laughs> My life. They, they frame. Uh, so this other uh, clan, right, mm-hmm. frames a lone wolf uh, for some kind of infraction against the shogun and they kill his wife. And for that, he has to go on the road, him and his infant son, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. getting an adventure. It was the cutest fucking peanut in the entire world. With the strangest hair, dude. That so kid's a cute. star. Mm-hmm. He's so cute. He's a really good just child him, actor, I just yeah. want to watch him running through the countryside for mm-hmm. like 20 minutes. He has, he has got the best, like, bitch, are you kidding me face I've ever seen. Oh, it's fantastic. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Because he, he, he behaves like a little badass. You yeah. Know? Right. Mm-hmm. He just looks annoyed. Mm-hmm. Like, he know, is, he know, you're yeah. saying this is when, like, a guy is pointing a sword at his head. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, yeah. his eyes. He just seen. looks so annoyed. It's so Some great. Shit. Well, I mean, at this point, he's been through th- three movies of this shit, so he's just got to be over it, right? So, yeah, you know? he's like, like, dude, he's just like, I mean, kill me or just, like, let's get this, let me go. I love it. <laughs> I'm done. I'm tired. <laughs> But if well, you like kill even, me, my dad's going to come kill you. It's going to be a right. whole thing. Even so. when he's in the middle of that fucking field and it's completely on fire, he's just looking around like, what is this bullshit? Like, yeah. he's not <laughs> scared at all. I love so it. Fuck well, again. it's interesting yeah. because the guy who follows him into this field, this, this is the first movie guy, where yeah. uh, Daigoro and Ito, like, split up. Mm-hmm. That happens again in one of the later episodes. Okay. But this is the first time, because they're always together. I mean, the idea is, as we were getting at, the uh, that you have a samurai, a ronin, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wandering the countryside, pushing his uh, son in a baby. Cart, I love it. I love this concept so much. Yeah. yeah, and it's super weaponized, and there's all sorts of, uh, of swords and, and mm-hmm. guns and stuff inside. Yeah, it. Guns, apparently. The cheating. There's, there's a lot of cheating in this, but we'll, I mean, we'll mm-hmm. get to that. Well, they split up, and uh, Daigoro meets. This is the he meets like this guy who you yeah, know, what's his started name? the entire conflict, I mm-hmm. guess, because you know he wanted to be the Shogun executioner, and he beat his dad and. Uh, combat. Gunbei. 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 No, no, no. Gunbei? Was it? Yeah, I think that's I think that's him, right? It might be, yes. I think Gunbei is yes. the guy who who's who uh a Japanese Elvis. Yeah. Is <laughs> what I would call him. Yeah. That's what he yeah. kinda looks like. He's got that quaffed and everything. Yeah. And the long hair. That's right, the amazing long hair. This is the problem with uh <sighs> high definition upgrades. Oh yeah. You can see all the wig. The wig work the is wig not scenes are great. Bad. You can see the glue, yeah. Bad. Just like, oh, yep. there's where it meets the skin. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 It's bad. Oh, it's you take what you can get. But the kid ends up in a field that the farmers have set on fire, yeah. and he doesn't seem to be all that perturbed about nope, it. No, okay, not at all. Why did they set this field on fire? They kept saying we'd have a better uh, rice. They do that. They do that. They do that. Farmers will, will set the rice field grows on fire, in the water, yeah. does it not? Well, I don't know about the rice part, but right. that's what they said. We'll have a yeah. great rice harvest next year. So, like, why the fuck are you setting your field? It's, well, on fire, it's a, maybe it's a dry, dry season. Like when it becomes dry, they burn it, and then it grows better when it becomes. What does that have to do water? with rice patties? Yeah, rice grows in water. Rice grows in water. That's yeah. why I don't understand. They do yeah. mention that Daigoro saves himself from burning by burrowing into the mud, mm-hmm. not yeah. the dirt. The mud. The mud. Yeah. Yeah. 
But so like rice go. doesn't Support grow up theory. like a, like a grain like that. You know what I'm saying? Like they that's burned like tall grass, and that's not how rice grows. Yeah, right. no, like, it looked more like a wheat field. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. they're clearing a field for rice. Yeah, yeah. Wow, we're getting really into the <laughs> agriculture. I just, the... I was like, I don't understand because like I these like I are said, legitimate questions. Like, I was were just a lot with of you like rice or wheat stalks that were massacred in this scene. A lot, a lot you. But I was disappointed because I because you just see a like we just cut to a scene of a bunch of villagers with torches in the daytime, and you're like, and I was like, we're gonna get. A mob, yes. <laughs> no, no. They're just gonna burn. They're just a field. doing their job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're really excited about it, though. They're, they're really super excited. into it. Well, when you're, well, when you're a farmer, what yeah. else can you get excited yeah. about? If you're a farmer. You get like, to, the most exciting. It's the week we get to burn stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like you're, you're always working the field. Stay. You set the field on fire. Right. Yeah. It's like That's, fuck you, field. Yeah. Oh man, if I got to set my job on fire, how awesome no, would that right. be? Right. If once a month you got to set your job on fire, this was that would be great. This was literally the the copy machine in the field scene and. Office space. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, literally yes. what this was. All it needed was With a little far bit of less music. Yeah. yeah, but we did have a little bit of like seventies funk going on. There I suppose is. that uh, you know the soundtrack. We didn't have rap, but we did have seventies funk. I didn't like the music under the dramatic scenes. Not the the action music yeah, the action. was awesome. Yeah, yeah. The dramatic like plot explanation scenes. It was like bad soap opera music, and I, I was agree. like, I hate this. Mm. Like yeah, especially because there's that. no score in the rest of the movie. Mm. So, hated, but those fucking fight scenes when we got the seventies funk that was legit. Well, that's that pretty much awesome. what It's like, oh the, shit, uh, Shaft is going to kick someone's awesome. ass. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the series is known for, yeah. are these like, extremely gory sword fighting scenes where yeah. limbs are hacked off and go flying through the air. People get cut Hell in yeah. half. You know, legs get chopped off, yeah. like just bits and pieces of everybody everywhere. And everybody mm-hmm. spray. I mean, like shiny spray, red blood. They spray it. Like, yeah. You know, in the you air, hit every t- the They hit an artery lens. every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. It's and I was trying wonderful. to find out like. I'm like, where does this come from in Japanese cinema? <laughs> this would be great if I like, like cut my finger. He goes and just randomly, and just shooting all constantly over. sprayed. <laughs> well, did the Bright Monty, Red Python, yeah, Monty Python movies like? Did they borrow it from this for like the Black Knight? Yeah. That would joke, make sense. You know? Actually, it would make they sense. Have. Yeah, or was because, this, even then it's not as extreme as this? Well, because in this movies you do see people literally get cut into like a stump of a human being, oh, yeah. yeah, and then they die. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, that would make sense if they did borrow that from. From these movies. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, well, in the first uh, or the second movie, there's a I think there's these female assassins that like hack this guy up as he's trying to like jump through yeah. the air and they're cutting like his nose <laughs> off and his <laughs> arm and his legs and all that stuff. And yeah. he literally ends up a stump. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, everybody sprays this like uh, whatever, it's the acrylic red, yeah. red. bright red, yeah. acrylic red. There yeah. you go. Yeah, that's a good one. It's literally the color of my nails right it's now. It's so bright. Mm-hmm. It's it like reflects bright. light. It's so bright. You know. Yeah, it's very paint. Bright. That's mm-hmm. just paint. Any of you? Do you, any of you know Akira Kurosawa movies at all? A little bit. Yeah, heard, slightly. Mm-hmm. Well, I haven't seen it, but uh, Yojimbo, which is the or was it Sanjiro? Uh, I think it was Yojimbo. Mm-hmm. That's the one where the guy turns the two clans against each other i think so i've seen it but it has it's been a while i think they said in that movie he might have pioneered the uh arterial spray nice cool in a samurai i believe movie. it he pioneered a lot of things so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's where that super uh gory thing comes from mm-hmm. but it helps the movie out immeasurably because by yeah. contrast the zatoichi movies don't have that you really know, well yeah because this is the problem that i always have with a lot of samurai movies uh in general is the sword play happens so fast Mm -hmm. you know they have like a a wide shot usually because they have guys who actually know what they're doing and they Mm -hmm. get in there the stunt crew or whatever the performers get in there and they're and then people fall down and you're like well what did i just see they don't cut in for dramatic close-ups or anything because again, like I said, they, it was even the same in like uh, Bruce Lee kung fu movies. Mm. They shoot it from a distance, and the guys are actually really doing it because they can fight, you know. Mm-hmm. But there's no, like, I miss the impact or something, right? You know, because it happens so fast, it's over, right. and people are are down. In this movie, they punctuate it by having the close-ups of the, uh, you know, appendages falling on the floor, yes, and the spray, you know, at the yeah. end. It makes more impact because you see this like a result of the action that they're doing. I yeah. always love that delay and like someone gets hit so quickly that like it takes like a second for their limb to fall off. I yeah. love that. Of like they get hit and then like a second later there's a beat and then the arm falls off. Mm-hmm. I love that. It's mm-hmm. really like impactful for what you're saying, like demonstrating the effect of what's happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's still a foot on the floor as yeah. they keep moving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, there's like guys like popping out of the woodwork the whole way through this movie. Almost literally. Now, okay, so there are, and I guess this is maybe uh, something we should talk about to set this up. So all of all six of the movies have basically the A plot and the B plot. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. So the A plot usually has something to do with uh, Retsu- Retsudo, the, uh, the, white, the white bearded dude. Yes. Right. And the overall quest. And then the B plot has like some assassination that Lone Wolf is uh, undertaking for 500 bucks. Basically, mm-hmm. that's his thing. As he's on the uh, demon, the demon path. Him and yes. his son are on the demon path. The demon mm-hmm. way in hell. Yep, they have to pass through the six realms of the four senses and all this other stuff. It's amazing. <laughs> and they say that in every movie. Yep. You know, it's like, ooh, you and I are on the... It's a know. continuing journey. Oh, yeah. But they never actually get to hell and never say... I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe they get to heaven. But but it's it's the, heaven uh, and hell. Eventually, white, white heaven, heaven and hell. hell. Yeah. Um, so the, the A plot being uh, that... Uh, um, there's all this uh, kind of uh, the Retsudo is trying to use a, like a proxy, his this other uh, feudal lord to a send off his or, guys yeah. against uh, Lone Wolf. And then the B plot has to do with this tattooed woman who's like an Yuki? assassin herself. Is that Yuki-o? Yuki-o? Is that Yuki? Oh, that was Oyuki. 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 Yes, it's Oyuki. Yeah. yeah. Who the movie starts out, shockingly enough, with like a close up of a nipple. Yeah. Which was like, yeah, that's how the movie starts. Movie, yeah. First shot. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, well, there's something oh. you don't see every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. She's very tattooed. She's got a mm-hmm. tattoo on her front and her back. Yep. Two yes. large tattoos. Mm-hmm. Which we see a lot mm-hmm. because she usually fights topless. Which actually, I was thinking they weren't bad fake tattoos for a 70s movie. If they were fake, like, I'm not, see, I'm almost wondering if they weren't because they yeah. look so good. They look that's, very they, good. They I, showed her without them. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess I can be covered with makeup, but, like, Maybe. you see movies now with fake tattoos, and they look horrible. Yeah. I know, that's why look, I'm these like... These look good. That's yeah. why I was like, these look really yeah. good. So either their makeup applying fake tattoos was amazing, or she just had actual tattoos, I don't Maybe. know. But, like, it, either way, it's better than any modern movie we've seen yeah, trying to do the same thing. It's just good. ironic that they can't do wigs. Yeah. But right. No, yeah. Can't do fine. Wigs. <laughs> yeah. But tattoos, I, yes. I really do think that character from Westworld is, like inspired by that character though because I can't remember it what her name is me. but that blonde chick in Westworld that has the snake tattoo that covers her whole body and it goes mm-hmm. around like front to back like that and fights naked all the time I feel like it's probably inspired by this character I'd love to live in a world where me. everybody has seen everything and no, it has all the same references that we do I think well, we're exploring I, the I, Jonathan Nolan did a lot of research for Westworld uh, so I would knows, not be surprised uh, uh, like samurai movie fans do you know that there is a term like Western to describe their movies that are samurai films. Ooh. I mean, probably, but I don't know what it is. Uh, well, as far as I could determine, there's two. There's one called, like, Jedi Geki. Oh. Which I'm like, clearly George Lucas got the. Right. It's like Jedi Geki. Well, yeah, he took like a lot from the Hidden Fortress too, you know. Yeah. So it wouldn't be. He's it, just a I thief. wouldn't put it past him, well, you know. The, see, this is where I think like the 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 new Star Wars movies, uh, sorry, the prequels, like went wrong oh, because yeah. like the old they didn't. Star Wars movies, the Jedi are clearly based on samurai. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Yeah. yeah. Where in the new one they made them like the cops of the uh, you know the of the galaxy and I'm like and they you know on Coruscant and they sit around the right. Jedi Council and all that and like you've done it all wrong it's mm-hmm. like they're supposed to be like for these feudal you know uh, lords or whatever I yeah. thought the, uh, cops is a good thing I was also thinking like the Minority Report things that like can see crimes coming you know before it happens oh, yeah. they were they kind of had a little bit of that and like cops were like we should know better so we're gonna stop people from doing it it was kind of their attitude about it yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's a good point i never really thought about the I mean, fact that they lost at, the like, samurai angle yeah, yeah. the clothing that they wear is uh, very like samurai very you know. much so yeah the yeah. fighting style was more samurai ish i would say in the earlier movies i mean mm-hmm. guys with swords wandering yeah. around the desert like yeah. Sk- 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 yeah. yeah laser swords instead mm-hmm. oh, but uh, jedi geki or jedi geki uh means period drama but i think it's uh, there's something called chanbara which is actually means like sword movie mm, mm, okay. cool sword movie i like sword movie yeah do you see a connection between these type of movies and our western movies yeah oh. I, I i think so i see a lot of knockoffs in the camera work from like our westerns borrowing from these movies yeah. a lot that Ours like really dramatic Sergio zoom Leone. in that's yeah. sergio leone though isn't it that's the italians yeah I mean, but like those were incredibly popular here, you know. Um, I, I, I guess those like are worldwide, I think. Yeah, yeah. But like, I think the camera work gets knocked off a lot. Like that really weird fast zoom they do from like really far away up onto someone's mm. face. That's the like almost zoom? jarring. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that got done in westerns a lot. Snap mm-hmm. zoom. Yeah. 
Well, that's like a hallmark of like the Italian movies. Yeah. And the, I think, I don't know. I can't say that they invented that shot, but right. you see a lot of that. But uh, I mean, just, you know, in the, the cinematography and, you know, the close up, the use of close ups. I'm like, oh, this is like the Eastern, you know, mm-hmm. it's like the, so they turned these out over there and, you know, they were kind of the equivalent of our Western. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like our yeah. cowboys are our samurais, right? Mm-hmm. Like the closest we have to it, right? Yeah, so wander, I guess it makes sense. You know, the countryside. Mm-hmm. They are two are like assassins for hire. They can be. The gunslinger. The gunslinger, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. The lone warrior. Yeah. I think yeah. that's probably what it all comes down to. Yeah. So where's my like Western version of baby cart and peril? I know. Why can't I? Oh, that'd be so fucking cool. Let's write I it. Know. Let's write it, guys. <laughs> all you have to do is adapt the manga to <laughs> yeah, like, make I'm a saying, Western like, out yeah. of it. This hasn't been Make done. it like a little tiny stagecoach, you know, that has guns <laughs> that come out the side and shit. Right. It'd be fucking awesome. All right. We may have gone a little yes. too far. No. Well, no, we have closest, not. You know, but we watched uh, the original Django uh, like way back. On the, but there was a guy who was he was carrying around a, a coffin and I'm like you know obviously there's nothing yep. in it but I'm like okay and in the coffin the coffin had weapons and stuff mm-hmm. like that but so we need like a there's des- also an anime like that called Trigun yeah. he's got a kid See? yeah mm-hmm. So maybe, yeah, we just mm-hmm. got to put like you get a little more heart when it's a little kid oh, sure. <laughs> you know, if you can yes. bring the kid around yeah alright so uh, A movie, B movie which one uh, did you, do you want to talk about the assassin, a the female plot, assassin, plot. or the which was hunt know, for the female assassin was not on screen as much as I had hoped. Yeah, yeah, we kind of want. I kind of like for being an A her. plot, she was not there much. Yes, I think she was the B plot. A you think plot she was, was the B plot? Even though it starts yeah. off with her, so that kind right. of, you know, in yeah. A, yeah. In a film the way you put a movie together, it's like you start with the A and you end with right. the A. But mm-hmm. this a starts with the B and ends with the A and yeah. and all that. Mm-hmm. But that could be because, you know, the audiences were going to it and had seen, you know, the other connecting films. So yeah. they were like, OK, I know eventually this is going to play back into his like revenge. Quest right. So whatever. you start mm-hmm. with the new stuff and then get back into the stuff that everyone else is familiar with already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, her story involves. Is it like the Japanese equivalent of sword and sorcery? There's a magician. The magician, illusionist. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. she calls him a sorcerer, but all he does is light his fucking blade on fire. That's pretty awesome, though. Hey, in Game of Thrones, that means a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's very true. Yeah. Game of Thrones, you guys are high. You can bring blade. about the world's end. You know. When I saw that, I was like impressed as hell because you don't expect that, and like that's going to be right. samurai. Not movie. only is it, uh, it's not just on fire; it's a flamethrower. Yeah. yeah, like it's coming yeah. from a uh, source, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I think you can sword. see in certain shots. That he's Probably got a tube or whatever, but right. But still, it's, damn, it's a flamethrower. Right, yeah, it's a flamethrowing sword. Yeah, and it's he does great. the whole like, "Don't look at my flame," or you know, look at me. Lose. Yeah. Look at my eyes, and that is uh, the way that he gets the upper hand on her, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, because of this incident where uh, he attacks her, then she leaves her clan, which dishonors them, which this whole thing, you know, the whole culture is built right. on honor. Oh, yeah. And honor. And if you are shamed, you are shamed for generations. Apparently so. It's, it's like yeah. harsh. It's harsh. Yeah. A lot of pressure in this society. Mm-hmm. To say the least. Glad I'm not held to that same standard. I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I would have fucked things up a long time ago. Yeah. That's pretty intense. It's mm-hmm. very, yes. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that means that she's going to, so she's basically outcast. Yeah. But she's really good with the sword yeah. because she grew up with a bunch of circus people. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, uh, it's it's fuzzy. <laughs> well, then I get that so this, it's like her dad is actually like he's a he's the lord of like a clan, but that clan is like uh, made up of street like performers. performers. Yeah. 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 I don't really know. Yeah. It's not entirely clear. And so somehow she ends up They're becoming crummies. a, uh, yeah. So she's like a, just a, she yeah. learns how to be a sword, uh, you know, like a savant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By hanging out with the rest of the carny mm-hmm. folk. Yeah. Doesn't mm-hmm. demonstrate enough of it in this movie, in my no. opinion. No, not it's so a lot much. of talk and no show. We get a. Well, she like, kills some motherfuckers at the beginning. At the beginning. Very easily. Yeah, but that's like as we're getting situated in this world. You know what I'm saying? So and then it doesn't ever really come back to that level again, I don't think, with her. With her, at least. Are they myth building with her? Kind of. Because every time we meet somebody, they're talking about like the time that they met her. Mm hmm. Or how many people does he meet? He just meets the guy who tattooed her. Mm hmm. Yeah. Which, like, why wouldn't you forget tattooing, like, 
that much of a person, you know, the whole back piece and front piece, basically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're going to remember that, especially when it's the old school stick and poke style. Where yeah, just hammering that a fucking, sound, yeah. that sound. I'm like, all right, I there get it. That, that I don't want to hear that, do that anymore. That. Yeah. Oof. And a lot, of, it's like a big tourist thing to go to Japan and get tattoos like that. Mm-hmm. Sure. White people do that all the time. And I'm just like, nah, I, I like not being able to see what's happening. To me. Or like, I don't want to hear what's happening yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Like, uh, what is it, like a tiny record needle kind of thing? You yeah. tap it into yeah. the skin. Yeah, and, and you push the ink into the, the hole. Like the yeah. artistry of it looks cool because he's got the little paintbrush in his one yeah. hand that he gets yeah. the ink from. And then he keeps tapping on it and keeps going and mm-hmm. he goes back to it. So like the artistry is like... I like it. It's awesome. But just the whole process seems like... It sounds Ooh. painful. It sounds yeah. painful as shit. Mm-hmm. It looks beautiful when it's it looks done. looks beautiful. Well, it's the thing. Like, when she's done, obviously, there's no, like, you know, bruising or blood running. Right. Her, no not, stabbing, right. no bleeding, <laughs> no nothing. So no reality yeah. whatsoever yeah. as far as getting a tattoo. Yeah, but she's a badass, concerned. too. I guess this is the thing. Like they She never moaned with, once. Yeah. I'm affecting a British accent for a, uh, uh, <laughs> for this movie. I don't know why. For the elderly Japanese yes. uh, tattooist? Yes. <laughs> it's a standard movie procedure. You can't do an accent, just talk British. Right. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to try hey, and do Star this. Star Wars did that. Not, I know. To not be offensive, I'm not going to try and adopt a uh, Japanese accent, because yeah. that's yeah. just not going to come out right. all of our British fans. I, see how it is. I think they'll be fine. good British accent. They'll be fine. <laughs> Um, They're used to it. <laughs> right. If I listening. do that and offend them, I'm not being racist. Yeah. The other way, I think I am be, so I, uh, I won't do yeah, that. Yeah, just don't go yeah, there. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Just- yeah. Well, the, uh, is, so she's set up, her character set up is like, you know, she's going to be the uh, opposite of um, of Ido, of Gami, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Lone Wolf. Mm-hmm. Because she, like him, is on a quest for revenge. She, like him, is an awesome sword swordswoman. She is uh, a uh, very dedicated, focused, you know, emotionless individual. And uh, so we think, like, what's going to happen there? Like, they're going to meet and it's going to be kismet. He's going to somehow, like, understand her plight. This is not the first time this has happened in the series, I don't come to think of it. But. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this sounds like something that gets recycled quite a bit. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, I think basically knowledge. all of the uh, the women that he meets that are major characters are, like, you know, also adept, uh, you know, assassins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That at some point he has to form some kind of alliance with, or at least understands why they're doing what they're doing. Which, it to me, it's, uh, you know, one of those interesting things about, like, you know, Japanese culture of this time or whatever. It's like he, so because he accepted a bounty on her to kill her like he is going to kill her even if he empathizes with her mm-hmm. position yeah because he's honor bound due to, to the contract it's yeah. like so even ethically it's like that doesn't matter yeah it's like you still you're ethically bound to the first person that you talk to who paid you the money to kill this right. other person yeah mm-hmm. You can go on little side missions with these people and everything. At the end of the day, you have to kill them. But it seems like everyone is very accepting of that sort of thing. Like, he meets yeah. her father, and her father's just like, I understand you have to kill her. He's just like, yeah, I get it. And, this mm. is the way and then work. she, and then even her, oh, she was going to do this. Yeah. And then even her, she's like, I understand you have to kill me. Like, it's very, everyone's very accepting. Like, right. they know. They're like, can we do this first? Like, can yeah. I do this? Then you can kill me. That's yeah. Fine. They're yeah. they're just like very respectful. Like, like I get it. First. Like, I, I respect you. Mm-hmm. And, and even later on, when he's talking to his kid, he's like, if I die out there, you're going to die here. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, dad. It's like, sure, dad. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, if I die, you die here. Everyone in this movie just like accepts their death. It's very crazy. Right. Because if you do it right, death is honorable. And yeah. It's preferable over many other things. It's so crazy. That has to be like a huge just cultural shift, right? Yeah. I would like, think I mean, so. I've, I've always kind of heard on like podcasts and stuff about how like. Uh, Western culture is very afraid of death and unwilling to yes. talk about it. Yeah, yes, to, like very Eastern much. culture, and yes. you really see it in these movies. I think yeah. you know. Yeah, like, exactly. If you do it the right way. Dying. It's an honorable death. A it's good yeah. death. Yeah. yeah, that's a good yeah. death. It's like that's the way a warrior is supposed to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The glory of battle. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, strange and unusual. To us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. I myself would want to go. am Especially strange and unusual. unusual. <laughs> Especially for characters such as uh, so. There's also this um, the 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 face maker the the mask. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this like, guy. This so guy. This I want guy, another movie about. But imagine this guy woke up that morning, right? It was like it's <laughs> <laughs> a great day. I wonder what today's gonna be yeah. like. I'm gonna like. Well, I'm gonna oh, maybe. Shit. I have uh, my garden. I gotta tend to, and I have to. You have know, like I'm planning. And, like I gotta yeah. go to the store later and probably pick this stuff up. And like, then you get. Yeah, summoned. I'm right. I gotta get wet food for my cat. Right. So I gotta make sure that's on the list. Yeah. Then you get called into the uh, the 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 what? He's not the show. The Lord's uh, chamber. Yeah. Right. And you find out. 
that uh like hey can you make this mask i can hey good job can you die now yeah oh uh, sure. Yes. sure yes i can sure yes indeed there goes your cats you're not getting fed you Mm-mm. don't have to worry about going to the grocery store no nope. no there was a weird a- like time lapse in that scene too when he put the mask on oh well sure yeah. he's gotta they gotta cover it too but like they did the like clock wipe time lapse you know like they did that kind of oh, like they? wipe animation to where like he, but like he was still putting it on when they wiped. Like he's yeah. putting it oh, on yeah, when no, they wiped, there, there was putting a process, on, and then yeah. like it was like, oh, it's done. It was, it was a slightly it was closer weird. process, but not yeah. a lot. It was weird because this movie has a bunch of flashbacks, but it doesn't have any like jump forwards like that, except for that one. Mm-hmm. Like that's All the right, only yeah. time it does that. Yeah. yeah. So it's weird because like Holly, you pointed out, it's constantly flashing back. Like every so samurai movie flashbacks. ever. Kung fu movies are yeah. just just riddled with flashbacks. <laughs> this may have, I mean, in this series, I think this one, watching it tonight, may have more than the others. The Felt others like seem it. like yeah. it was a basically lot. straightforward. A lot. Well, this one was directed by a different guy. Uh, the oh, yeah, first who's directed four, all these? Well, the first four were directed by, uh, I'm sorry if I uh, forget oh. his name. Let's see here. It was, was a fellow two? named Kenji Misumi. He directed a good number of the Zatoichi movies and then also, I think, four out of the six uh, yeah. Lone Wolf and Cub movies. But this particular episode was directed by a guy, I believe his name was Buchi Saito. Oh, yeah. Who was like, so this is, it, it feels a little tonally different than the other uh, films. But uh, so he was brought in and it uh, has a little bit of a of a different flavor. I forgot what we were just talking about that got me sidetracked flashbacks. onto that the flashbacks, the flashbacks. Yep. that's why I think there's so many of them in this mm-hmm. I mean there's three movies of history that they kind of have to hit on at some yeah. point you know and they're doing the retroactively like by establishing the you know the uh, the flashback of why uh, there's this uh, conflict between uh, Lone Wolf and the other uh, Lord or yeah. like that's kind of retrofitting uh, the original movie um, but the uh, the guy with the the mask, right? Mm-hmm. It's like so. Explain this to me, because uh, we have Lord Retsudo, right? Whose son, in trying to um, vanquish Ido for the position of shogunate executioner, right, shogunate. ends up offend uh, the shogunate. Thank yeah. you. Ends up offending the shogun, and it looks like he's trying to point his sword at the shogun. How right. dare you! You how f- dare you? Ruin the house forever. <laughs> yeah. So, Ritsudo's plan is, you've offended our house, and I'm going to banish you. You have to leave. Get the fuck out of here, because that's mm-hmm. what happens, right? Mm-hmm. But what should happen is he should uh, commit the ritual suicide. So, he brings in the face maker mm-hmm. to dress up like his son and kill himself, and he's going to take that guy's head to yeah. the, the show. Yeah. That's some shit. Some other dude fucked up some and you gotta die for it. Shit. Yeah, yeah, but I don't yeah. understand like why he would do that. I guess like what I mean Because he was commanded to. No, but why or yeah, I guess but why uh Retsudo would do that, why not just kill his kid? I right. mean He loves his kid. He loves his kid. And, yeah. he, and he's a great sword. Well, yeah. he says he's a great swordsman, so I don't really want yeah. to kill you. Do you think maybe he's like, this guy's gonna right so many wrongs in the world that if I take him out, like that's all those Wrongs are still going to exist, so it's just better to sacrifice this one guy for the greater good, I guess. It's possible. Yeah. You know? I just don't get the idea that, like, uh, what is it, Gunbei? Gun, 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 Gunbei? Yeah. Gunbei is out there, like, doing anything proactive. He doesn't seem it like he's doing like, shit. Yeah, because he his He needs to thing, get a life, man. He kind of does. He needs to take yeah. a life. living in the past. Specifically, yeah. Yeah. Edo's, right? If he did his that. Own. Right. Well, he's right. <laughs> Well, if he takes his own, then it defeats the purpose of his dad having this other guy stand in for him. Yeah. And if he kills Ido Ogami, then it's like, then he avenges this Mm -hmm. uh, besmirchment on his family's honor, I Mm -hmm. suppose, right? Even though he still pointed his sword at the Shogun or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at least you'd get revenge. Mm -hmm. I suppose there'd be that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Man, that, guy, should, that guy just yeah, seemed like a loser. <laughs> yeah. He's he got spared and he's out sitting in a field doing nothing. So yeah. like, come on, do something. Yeah, mm-hmm. don't just wait for shit. He's like he's been quaffing his hair for the past ten years or whatever. <laughs> it's been going on. So he's, hiding yeah. out in that house, waiting for the kid to show up so he's, he can point his sword at. Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then he doesn't kill the kid. He, well, he was going to kill the kid. He was. He's yeah. like, I'm going to point my sword at this because he killed the one dude. Who's just like, ah, don't do it. Yeah. He like, that he, and he gave the guy a warning. He's like, either get out of my way or I'm going to kill you. And then he immediately killed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's a short warning, there, yeah. buddy. 
but he died. That's pretty severe too. It's like, it, I'm yeah. gonna kill this kid because he's obviously like a badass little. Uh, right, he person. should die now. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the son of my worst enemy. So yeah. right, yeah, naturally. But that leads to a conflict between uh, this guy and Lone Wolf, uh, and so we're like, okay, this is going to be like one of the major battles. Right, in this the, is going to be a, a a long battle. Was and it? It's not. <laughs> what not happens? at all. Uh, I think they fight for two seconds, and then uh, Gunbei gets his arm cut off. Yeah. <laughs> And then he's like, there's no use killing a dead man. It's just like, oh, okay. You could still yeah. just kill him and not have to deal with this shit later yeah. on. But whatever. Yeah. Just whatever honor, yeah. you know, like, says fine, you need okay. to do. So go for it. And I still enjoy the stoicism of these characters that even oh, right. if their arm comes off and they're bleeding out, like, <laughs> they're like, not even that. That's not even that much what you just did right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. He's just stoic. He's just like, <laughs> yeah. I can go take now. it. I can right. take it's like, it. I'm no, good. I'm, like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Still, I'm good. I will kill you for my honor. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm bleeding. Whatever. Yeah. I gotta wonder if when Japanese audiences watch movies like The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, they're like, why are these battles going on for fucking hours? <laughs> like, you know, because yeah. their battles are over in a second. Right. Whereas yeah. Like, yeah. ours are a lot of pomp and circumstance and, you know, yeah. Yeah. demonstration. You think they sit there Maybe and they enjoy like, that. These people just don't know how to fight. I think they're just like, Maybe. wow, what a ridiculously stylized version of fighting, you know, is probably, probably. their thought. If they even watch them. Who knows if they even go... To, like, I don't know how well those movies did in Japan, but... As long you know. as there's no ghosts. <laughs> they don't True. like ghosts. Well, there might be ghosts. Mm, Lord of the Rings kind of has ghosts. Uh, in Japan? They crawl out of TVs and stuff. China doesn't like ghosts. China doesn't yeah, like ghosts. I'm sorry. Like Japan's ghosts. fine with them. China yeah. doesn't like ghosts. China, Japan's got ghosts all over the place. Right. There's nothing but ghosts. Including... Yeah. A later episode of Lone Wolf. Well, that's not really? true. But there's ghosts. The last episode, well, the, la- the sixth movie, yeah, is it moves the, the location to like the snow and gets out of mm. desert and forest and all that. But on the way there, well, Ratsudo, the ultimate, the big bad guy, he uh, and I'm like, this is why he spared his son because he like his other sons have died in the other movies mm. trying to confront uh, Ido. Uh. So at the end in the sixth movie, it turns out that he's got a uh, like illegitimate son who lives in the mountains with oh. the some like, like kind of like a cult Japanese thing, and he has these guys who like burrow through the ground. Like <laughs> moles, Ooh. yeah. They like dig a hole and just kind of dive down into it. It's the weirdest thing. Oh, yeah. Very cool. I like what? this. Yeah, mole people. Yeah, yeah. Shut mole samurai. I'm down. Yeah, yeah. It Sounds was kind of cool. Plus, really... you get that red blood spray in the snow. You do. Oh, There's like yes. a massive, yeah, yeah. That's because I good. think the movie before this, which is titled uh, "Baby Cart in the Land of Demons." The movie before this? Oh, before this one? Uh, that is his uh, baby, baby cart, cart to Hades. Hades. Yeah. I think that was the first one that ended with like a um, good, the bad, and the ugly kind of standoff oh. you know, where there's like a hundred dudes yeah. that he has to kill. And then this one at the end of it also kind of does that. Where there's like a hundred a bunch of swordsmen dudes. running through and who wear uh, baskets on their heads. Yeah. Yeah. Why? <sighs> Why the baskets? Yeah. Um, it's in clan identity. I don't know. I'm making stuff up. I All have right. no idea. Okay. Their cool. regular outfits though look like the putties from Power Rangers. Like Some the gray them, like yeah. head coverings and gray outfits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the the last one did end with like a hundred dudes in the snow though. So there was that sounds that awesome. That sounds awesome. great. Well, who knows? I mean, you stick around with this podcast long enough. Uh, yeah, we'll get to it. On a long enough timeline. Yeah, we'll get yeah. to it. <laughs> Um, okay, so all these uh, storylines wrap up. Uh, Yuki O. O Yuki? O Yuki. <laughs> right? Yeah, it keeps sounding like Yu Gi Oh. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yu Gi Oh is different. O Yuki. Well, she is able to avenge her shame on the sorcerer. Yeah, that fucking asshole. Although I like the fact that the Lone Wolf pauses in his assassination mission to allow her to get her revenge. Hells yeah, yes. he's like, oh yeah, there's that rapist. Go ahead and kill him before we finish. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate is this the that. groper? The groper. Yeah. yeah. And he basically said, like, that he raped her before she woke up. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was Which is why she was shit. naked. Mm-hmm. Weirdly oh, enough, I, I was more offended by his comment that she couldn't be an assassin because she was pretty and only ugly women. Yeah. Assassin. I was more bothered yeah. by that. But this is like not... That. Uh, <laughs> That was bullshit. He straight up said that. He said, you're too pretty to be an assassin. Only ugly women are assassins. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, whoa, right. okay. She's even like, fuck yeah. anyone killed him right there. If anything, she's a better assassin f- 
for being pretty, right? Yeah. Because like that's like an extra I mean, it, I mean, that's that's weapon yeah. in your arsenal. And right? don't expect that yeah. she's right. as good exactly. at being, Especially yeah. in her like final battle. And yeah. She, when she flashes him to kill him, right. yeah. that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm using this to my advantage yeah. and I'm going to kill you. Th- that was yeah. the shit. I yeah, love that. It had that. a pretty good like setup and payoff. He yeah. beat yeah. her the first time by using his like, don't look in my eyes. Yeah. And he did it the second time and she flashed him and it distracted him enough yeah. that you know, well, that was yeah. awesome. And your numbers yeah. up. That's a, that's a that's a good payoff for that yeah. story. Yeah, it was. That was like the only way to wrap that up where I wouldn't be like, yeah, fuck this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that was solid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do uh, I mean our other plot threads? I mean, then it's uh, Lone Wolf versus the rest of the ninja that are coming after him. Right, and yeah. he gets into a little valley with crevices and corners and shit. Mm-hmm. When he shoots the before he goes in the crevice, oh, yeah. he shoots the baby gun. Uh, baby cart gun. Yes. Mm-hmm. A bunch. It's in, the first that, reveal like, of the baby cart gun. Fucking Zen garden. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, we say gun, but, like, it's like the front panel pops off and bolts shoot out of it. You don't actually, like, see any <laughs> right. gun barrels yeah, or anything. No, yeah, no. <laughs> and no and wasn't there blow no darts earlier? Things, yeah. 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 He's got yeah. a thing that's got darts yeah. on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why awesome. I'm like, does every movie just kind of up the ante on what that cart can yeah, be. So yeah, so far, yes. Does it turn well, into a fucking Transformer in the last movie? I'm yeah. telling you, it's like the Batmobile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's New funny. toys, every it, movie. It's in there. It's yeah. got it, yeah. Well, I think they use the gun again after this movie. But I guess that's the thing. It's like after watching the first three, and I did just recently watch all six of these in a row, but after the first three, it was like, this one does do things that the other movies hadn't done. It introduces the flashback. Like I said, it, it mm-hmm. sets up the original conflict. It introduces the gun in the, you know, the uh, the baby cart. And it also changes where we leave the, uh, the protagonist by the end of the movie, right? Because at the end of all of them, usually Lone Wolf uh, vanquishes his opponent and wanders off into the sunset with Daigro yep. to the next adventure. Mm-hmm. But in this one... Uh, both Retsudo gets a knife in the eye, so oh, he's yeah. eye patch guy for the rest of the series. Right. Which I'm like, that's a cool look, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he gets yeah. Yeah, kind of fucked up by the end of this thing. Like he's getting stabbed a lot. Everybody's getting stabbed a lot. Yeah, but like Ito takes a lot of like he, he does. As in the rest of these films, he is so good at being a killing machine that I don't think he like gets injured at all. You know, he's just. And everybody drops dead. Sometimes when he puts his sword away, and there's that little click, and then they fall over. You know, I think they did that in uh, yeah. Bill Bill then, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but in this one, it's like he gets stabbed. It looks like mortally. Mm-hmm. It feels like it should times. be mortally, like in the gut, in the back. Get some arm slices. Yeah, He's so much that Michaela up. was not wondering, like, oh, does he bleed out or whatever? In the mm-hmm. <laughs> it, yeah, he's bleeding as they walk yeah. away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, so that was like a, a, a something that would be different that separates this movie from the rest. In the next yeah. movie, he's fine, and they never mention it. What? Yeah. God damn it! I loved how he told this kid, "Pull the sword out of my back." Like, yeah, yeah and like, like <laughs> this kid. I, this kid's pretty smart for his age, but yet he doesn't know that he should probably pull the sword out of his dad's back. Like he has to be told to do right. that. I don't know if Daigoro actually says anything beyond Papa. Papa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like in the other movies, I mean, he never gets like no. extremely vocal. There should be. I That's wish what's in the so last... weird about you know Shogun Assassin comparisons because he's doing all the VO for the movie. And I wish it's like, there was my a... dad did this and my dad did that. And right, I wish there was yeah. a little kid monologue in the last movie where mm-hmm. it's just him talking for like an extended period of time. It's like, well, Dad, based on our last adventures, here's what I think <laughs> we should do going forward, which would be great. Yeah, or he's like, I've updated the uh, technology on our baby cart, and uh, he becomes the he's like the Alfred or the Alfred, something. Yeah, yeah. 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 that he's would be great. The, yeah, I kind or of, the cue to James Bond. Yeah, you know? yeah. like oh, here's your new gadgets. Yeah, yes. I kind of wanted the final scene in this to be um, the kid pushing him in the cart <laughs> since he was <laughs> yeah. bleeding that out. Be good. That's not a bad right? Idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's good. what I wanted. Yeah. Damn, that would have been awesome. Oh, damn. <laughs> that would have been all right. That would have been cool. But I guess I like that, you know, Shit. the uh, the Shogun Assassin voiceover. It's not like, he's not um, like an adult. No, it's a kid's voice. And yeah. that's what's so cool about it. So he's like eight, maybe, yeah. or something, telling yeah. what happened when I was three. How old yeah. is this kid in this movie? I don't like, you think. Not that four, old. Four, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Four, yeah. yeah. The way he runs, yeah. Yeah. Little peanut. God, he's so cute. But that's exactly that's like, a good child actor. You're right, though. Colin. That yeah. kid's a star. Yeah. yeah he's like <laughs> he's a, a decent, great child like, actor. Perform- camera performer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. granted that he spent God knows how much of his, you know, the uh, three and four year old right. life. 
performing these well, she movies. She probably hates acting after that, and he's like, yeah. never doing it again. Mm-hmm. We got to look him up. We got to find out if he did something. We'll post it on our Facebook if we uh, if we <laughs> if we find <laughs> whatever happened so. to Daigoro. What's his name again? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If you're out there, <laughs> <laughs> if you yeah, maybe if you check yeah. Twitter, <laughs> maybe he's still acting in Japan. I know that uh, Wakayama, who plays uh, our lone wolf, yes. he was in uh, Ridley Scott's Black Rain. Uh, remember that really? movie with nope. Michael Douglas? Nope. Oh, okay. I remember Hard Rain. I don't remember Black Rain. Really? Really, Scott? Yeah, Michael no, Douglas. I don't remember this one. He wants to go nope. to Japan. He partners up with a no. Japanese partner. No idea. Not at all. Idea. Not no not at all. Oh, wow. This kid quit acting after a Shogun Assassin. Oh, oh. no. Wow. So he quit. Or he That's the last or, or, thing on his credits. Yeah, but what before that? It's just Lone Wolf and Cub. That's it. That's oh, wow. it. He has seven IMDb credits, and that is it. Oh, wow. Oh, well, wow. Hey, good yeah. for him. Get in, get out. You'll be known for that for the rest of your life. Hopefully, he's getting good residuals, I hope. Good residuals, and uh, hopefully he leads a normal, healthy life. Yeah. And it's not damaged by <laughs> yeah. the things he had to do in this movie. So, yeah. hopefully. It was the 70s. It was a different time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was. Yeah. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. yeah, it was the 70s. That kid was on coke at that time. So it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. But it's, uh, it's amazing that Holly, he doesn't... Holly's like, oh, no. Holly was worried. <laughs> <Sweet baby>. <laughs> <laughs> I think in one of the later movies, he uh, there's uh, one of the... Like female antagonist is a pickpocket that goes around, mm-hmm. and he sees her like picking somebody's pocket. And then when the cops come, he doesn't give her up. They're like, "Kid, what? Mm. You know, did you see? Point her out." And he doesn't do it, and so they torture him like the publicly. <gasps> yeah, they they're like doing some kind of spanking kind of thing. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's not good, but okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's like you know, either you're going to say that identify who it is, because we've got this woman. Is it her? And he doesn't say. Or I think he says no. You know, he actually says it's not yeah. her, even though he knows it is. And di- you know, his father's standing out there in the crowd, and you're like, what is the dynamic between this father and son that? You know, like in this movie, I think like the biggest emotional thing that he has is once, you know, after Daigro has been lost and gone on his own yeah. little adventure and burning fields and all that, when he comes back and, you know, his dad picks him up. There's an extra squeeze of the, the squeeze. squeeze. Right. Yeah, I'm like, like, oh, oh. I know. <laughs> yeah. That actually, I'm glad to have you no, back. I liked that. That actually pulled up my heartstrings a little bit because <laughs> he's so stoic. So just that right, little so gesture. Right. So that means a lot mm-hmm. because he's yeah. so stoic. That yeah. extra little squeeze. I actually really like, like Don't ever that. leave me again. Yeah. yeah. And they just like have this kind of mutual respect, which was uh, the the way that the, the series started out after the mom was killed. Uh, he didn't like the kid, did he? Huh? Did he like the kid? Yeah, he did. But he said the kid's like a baby and he oh, right. sets out a ball and a sword. And right. He's basically like, right. Daigoro, you know, the kid's on the other side. And he's like, Daigoro, you don't understand a word I'm saying, but come to me and choose either the sword or the ball. If you choose the ball, you will join your mother right. tonight. If he chooses the sword, he's going to Shit! Him. Yeah, uh, what? Right. Yeah, I remember that. Fuck. Yeah. What? Yeah. So Daigoro crawls over to the sword. And it's you like, should watch Shogun Assassin. Oh my God. You probably really like two. Shogun Assassin. I think I probably it. would. Yeah. Yeah, it's intense. It's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, you got yeah. anything else on, on this uh, I don't think so. film, or should we uh, head to Mailbag and Wrap The uh, Rock Garden? We were talking oh, about yeah. when we were watching it, we garden. talked Everyone's, about it at length. It's like 50 people standing on a rock garden. Mm-hmm. Like, that's yeah, that's perfectly groomed and be- these beautiful straight lines all across. So we theorized they like got everyone into place and then groomed it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. because and he the- would have pushed the cart through that, yeah, and the right. lines were perfect behind him. And you know, so. the AD on the movie is going, Nobody fucking move. Yeah. <laughs> don't <laughs> even breathe. I'm in charge of this. I don't have to do it again. Uh-huh. Hold your Don't move. Breath, you know? Right. Yeah. That was intense. <laughs> well, it's like I was thinking every time they had to reshoot that scene, they had to redo that shit again. We you know? They only did one take. I hope probably. so. Probably. Perfect. Yeah. Right, take one. Because, yeah. I mean, realistically, it's just them standing completely still in front of them until the baby until car opens up. So, right. yeah. really. And then they can yeah. fuck up the garden all they want. Yeah. But yeah. All, no lunch all, all it takes breaks. is one extra to step wrong, you know? Yeah. And then that, it's got to be redone. And then he gets sacrificed. Yep. And he's a death in this movie. And we also talk about, we didn't, but then the action scene that took place in the Buddhist temple or whatever, the little temple that he goes to. The hot to. springs? Or no, no. The, the, with the putties? Where the, where the guys oh, all dressed in gray yeah, and the, the mud putties, on their faces yeah, and everything yeah. who get chopped up? Oh, okay. So yeah, we, we talked about because that was... So, climbing around on the ceiling. Yeah. Right, on the ceilings. Because that was when we were talking about how it was kind of comparable to Monty Python because they lose all their limbs. Right, they're, they're just losing like legs and they're still trying to fight. And they're like, crawling like the guy's around got... like stump, like a stump. Right, yeah, yeah. Still, like the guy you with like... the one leg still trying to kick the dude. Was that an effect or did that guy have like No, because it was in one... No, it was in... They're, it was in the, it was floor, in the pant right? leg. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. One of them was in like the pant leg. They bent it so far back where it was just his leg. 
yeah. in one gotcha. pant thing, it, and the knee was the stump. Because mm. it was the one stumpy guy who lost all his limbs, and he was actually like trying to bite him. Yeah, yeah and right. I thought that, that was, was funny. Yeah. <laughs> to the bitter end. That was funny. Yeah. yeah. And he looked at him and was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. That's Stab the thing the about like this life of the demon way to hell or whatever. Mm. It's like he never knows. Like just walking past a person on the road, like is this person out to get me, right or not? Because they Which pose it as could like, be or couldn't be depending on the movie. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it's happened. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And he's pretty identifiable because you just like look for a dude pushing a fucking baby pushing in a, a cart. cart. You know, yeah, it's not. You know, he point. needs to kind of mix it up a little bit to, for safety. Maybe like a backpack or something. You know? Ironically, right. in all yeah. the movies, he's the on. only person I have ever seen pushing a baby. Cart. Do you think that's because the mom's dead? Like normally, the mom would be taking well, yeah. care of the baby. So, like, but that once yeah. again, that it makes it more right. identifiable. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and everybody pushing seems a baby to cart, know that never happens. Yeah, and everybody seems to know, like, you know, he who he is, and then right. he has a, uh, mm-hmm. a price on his head. But then you have the other people who, in every movie, they leave the the drawings of the whatever the dragon. I'm not sure what the symbols are, but on the 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 temples yeah. yeah because then he leaves the little you know whatever the, the rock formation yeah yeah that's right. like a thing that he doesn't to let them know that he's there then he meets them at you know at dark and they give him the job right. usually is how that goes but you figure nobody would fuck with this guy once they heard about like the news of the baby cart and what it can do mm-hmm. would get back to someone and we become part of the legend they'd be like let's not fuck with this guy because he'll yeah. just pull out swords and no it's amazing up. the the amount of uh, people who just throw themselves to death because I think the, the movie before that, there's like a uh, assassin who wants to hire him. Mm. But before they do, they want to test him. So they send like their five best guys to meet them along, meet him along the road. Yeah. So he like meets first guy. Guy explains, you know, well, I got to test you before, you know, we can hire you. Then he kills him. Then he meets the next guy. I got to test you. You got to be tested like five times. It's like, what the? F-? So he just threw these five guys away. Right. right. To, <laughs> to prove that he was as awesome as you heard that he was. Before you hire him, because that's, so that's how what you do, do in the whole yeah, uh, that's a, the world of samurai. I'm glad job interviews are not that strenuous now. I know, right? mm-hmm. it's a good thing. God, I hope not. It's like you have to kill someone, <laughs> and then we'll give you the job. <laughs> yeah. All right, so listener, thank you for sticking with us through uh, our little conversation. We're going to answer some of your mail, and then we're going to go around the room, and you're going to find out if we would recommend this movie to you. So first of all, let's summon our mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. He's in a baby cart. Watch out for him. <laughs> I don't know who's pushing it, but he's rolling around. <laughs> yeah, it's pushing itself. Yeah, that's uh, that's frightening. What he, hidden? He things probably shouldn't have that. No, I was gonna say there's gonna be some blaze on. He's gonna cut himself. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not, don't it's do a dangerous situation. No, his just has Nerf guns. He's fine. Oh, oh he's <laughs> like, better. Yeah, he's fine. Right, he just bangs. He just the wants to Nerf look like a on. badass. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. pretend to get hurt when he shoots you. Ow. Yeah, it's good confidence. Just say ow when yeah. he, you know, uh, shoots you. Yeah. Yeah. Ow. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just make sure to boost his confidence. <laughs> well, Igor. how can the folks uh, find us to write in and be delivered by Igor? Their mail delivered by Igor hmm. on Facebook. <laughs> Deliver us from Facebook. Igor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a good subtitle. Deliver us from Deliver Igor. Us from yeah. Igor. Yeah. I like that. Well, how can they find us on uh, Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> The first. Oh, whoosh, whoosh. Of, uh, oh Jesus. Is right. this two pages? It's two pages. Why don't we have a long I know, page? Two it, pages of mailbag. That's, All right. that's longer than a, a shit. legal sheet. Longer than okay. legal paper. Oh, no, yeah. shit. All right. So, uh, first of all, we I have. Want scrolls. Uh, I want scrolls. Brian Moore writes in. And he says, the Saturday Night Freak Show is a great podcast with an interesting movie lineup and good chemistry amongst the podcasters. Why, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. That's really nice. It just, it is. Uh, Johnny New Jersey wrote it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, first of all, he wanted to, um, we we were talking about uh, Rooker last, we were talking about Uh, Cliffhanger. cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rooker is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Hall of Fame is you got to be on the show three times. He is? (laughs) Because he was in Super... He was in Cliffhanger oh, and he was in Slither. In Slither. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right, thank you for doing the research yes, for us. Yes, thanks for the homework. Well, no, he did. I, I told him that because I thought about that after Oh, the fact, okay. Yeah. But he was saying that uh, we have overlooked a person 
who is on the house. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. We'll have says, oh. Igor get the picture ready. Meeting so. the three film requirement with the following. <laughs> Tango and Cash, Maniac Cop, oh, and Samurai Cop. Oh, Jesus. Maniac Cop and Samurai, samurai yeah. Cop. Yeah. Robert Dazar. Yeah. Robert Zadar. Oh, 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 God damn it. That's yes, right. You didn't know Zadar. that he was on the Wall of Fame, but he is. So shit. he says, yeah. uh, Robert Zadar has cemented his place. I believe proper <laughs> acknowledgement and respects are needed to be paid. Bravo, I sir. look yeah. forward to each episode every week, even the bad choices. And I'm looking at you, <laughs> Michaela. Wow, okay. Your cat woman. <laughs> you got called out. You got called, called out. out. Shit. You say that, you'll still listen. He says, he did, no, you should listen. He, messa- he listen. messaged me earlier today. He listened to it today. Yeah. Oh, there you yeah. go. So you'll still listen. We yeah. need another wall. Yeah. <laughs> Our wall's getting full. I mean, Stallone's so half we need, of it. We need know? somebody to like uh, actually document like who yeah. all is on the wall. Thing. Well, you yeah. say he's half of it. I got to ask. Half like, we it. only get one picture. Up there, though. We don't get a picture from the episode. But like we talked about, he built the wall, though. Right, like, right, still, right. Still, We've done more Stallone movies right. than but he gets else. He's, like, yeah. in first position, but there's only one picture of Oh, Stallone. yeah, right. but, I mean, he, he owns it. Let's be real. Yeah, like, you know, wall. we keep going back to he him. He built it, he know? climbed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, he also says, keep up the great it. and yeah. funny work and let the Halloween picks begin. Yeah. Thanks. That's so, awesome. So, a Twitter user... Named Elbow Skin makes me grin. What? <laughs> oh. Uh, what? Oh, no. hey, let's see what this question is. That is oh, uncomfortable. No. This is a Saturday Night Freak Show. Have you done an episode on Meet the Feebles? That film is crazy. <gasps> Talk about it. That is a bonkers that movie. That is a crazy movie. About it's kind of, yeah. it grosses me out. Like, yeah. it's always yeah, gross. Know. I don't know if we can do that. But. I don't know. We did Dead Alive. That's a gross Peter Jackson movie. We've so. done Dead Alive. Uh, Peter Jackson did Frighteners, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, with this, put him on the wall. If we did Meet the Feebles? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Should we do Meet the Feebles? Should we do Bad Taste? I don't know. Uh, Not Bad Taste. Not no, bad, dead, no, no, no. Meet, I would, I'd rather do Meet the Feebles yeah, than Bad same. Taste. You Maybe we'll get there. You know what the future holds. But yeah. That is a good suggestion. Yeah. Yes. Appreciate well, about it. our upcoming 300th episode, and if you're with us tonight, this is 298. We're getting so, we're getting so close. Ooh. But uh, Karate Warrior 2 wrote in with some suggestions. Yes. He says, Dumb. there have been a few movies that have been mentioned, like Deadly Friend by Gary, Munchies by Travis, and Miami right. Connection by Mikhail and Holly, but you never brought them to the freak show. This Regardless, is, this, has gotta be, okay. this, this has got to be... He says it's got to be a uh, live show done on YouTube or Twitch or something. Okay, uh, uh, Miami Fire Connection is coming. Infinite. Like I okay. said before, we got to put we'll some distance there. between us and how did this get made, because right. they just did it. So yeah. we got to give some, it a couple months. There's yeah. some you know, maneuvering we have to do. With yeah. We can't just do the same movies back to back and everything. We've got to yeah. spread them out and yeah. pick different But things. if nobody listens to how did this get made... <laughs> yes, nobody listens to the biggest movie podcast ever. We don't know what our listeners listen to. Anyway. Uh, about uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, Baby Cart in Peril, Yojimbo Ice writes in. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he writes Yojimbo. in and says, I inherited a stack of Lone Wolf and Cub tapes 10 years ago, and they're wow. absolutely oh, wow. delightful. Kill Bill owes a huge debt to their pioneering humans as merely pressurized sacks of blood. Yeah. The Wu Tang Clan. It's a great yeah, way to put yeah, that. That is a great That's very true. Shit. That is all they are. He says uh, the Wu Tang Clam samples of Lone Wu-Tang, Wolf. You said Wu Tang Clam. I'm just going to point that out. You did. The Wu Tang Clan. There you go. Ain't nothing. Uh, to samples with. of Lone Wolf's packed with Cub is legendary. It's wonderfully acted, particularly with the original voice actors. What a great pick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Johnny mm-hmm. New Jersey wrote in. Wrote what in. up? Uh, Johnny. He said, great choice of Lone Wolf and Cub. It's a series I've always meant to start, but never got around to it, so I'm excited to start it. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. About our episode Cliffhanger. Jacob Kotner writes in, and he says, we covered Cliffhanger on Refund Theater last year. Nice. I have watched it before, but never intended to. I haven't seen it since then and barely <laughs> remember anything, just basketball, CGI, and makeup. The movie is... Re- oh, sorry. Is he talking about... That sounds like Cat, Cat, Cat Woman. Catwoman. Wait, yeah, hold on. Basketball, back back CGI, Catwoman. Catwoman. <laughs> okay, let me read it again. Yeah, let's yeah. go back. So Catwoman, we covered it on Refund Theater last year. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Never intended to watch it. Haven't seen it since. Barely remember anything, just basketball, CGI, and makeup. This movie's ridiculous. It's an outrageous turd. Poop. P.S. I want to thank Igor for always delivering my letters. You should give him a raise. All right. Uh, you officially have a raise, Igor. I don't yeah. know what we were paying you before, but I'm Well, enough it. for him to make a fucking baby card, apparently. So, so. <laughs> he might He's be overpaid right now. <laughs> Well, lumber's uh, cheap. What did he say? And he's probably pulling apart the house upstairs. Probably, too, so. yeah. There's a hole in your house somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was you it? You don't have he, any running water anymore because all the pipes have been yeah. taken out. He, what do you say? He never intended to watch it. Yeah. That was that's, never that's, saw that's pretty good line. Never yeah. intended to. Yeah. Neither did Sean. Like, neither did me or Sean. Most yeah. people don't. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, well, about cliffhanger then. Uh, yeah. Grant Parrish writes in. What up? And Grant says John Lithgow was originally Hades in the Disney Hercules movie. He right. recorded a lot of the dialogue, then something, 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 recast part with James Woods. Have you guys watched Killing Me Softly, starring Heather Graham and Joseph Fiennes? Fiennes? Fiennes. Fiennes. He plays a mountain climber. The movie's more of an erotic thriller, but there's one scene in particular that's quite memorable. Maybe something worth bringing to the freak show. I was really confused by that comment because I thought at killing first I read softly. Killing Them Softly, yeah. and I was like, Which that I've is seen not that. the movie. Yeah, I've seen that too. But Killing Them like, Softly is not erotic. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And I was like, that's not a climbing that's movie either. Brad Pitt. Yeah, right. Yeah, right so right. I was very yeah. confused at first. But no, no. I have not seen Killing no, I haven't Me seen Softly. Is that what it is? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, but uh, killing, Heather Graham in an erotic killing killer? me yeah. softly. Uh, yeah. I'm okay. all for that. Okay. Uh, Sean Roger writes in and answers the question of uh, which Rennie Harlan movie is the best one. He says, I've only uh, seen a handful of Rennie Harlan movies, but I'll say this one is my favorite out of those few. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not very many good Rennie Harlan movies. Right. Or enjoy. Or nice. I should say there's not very many enjoyable Rennie Harlan very movies. Like, Depends very what true. you like. Most of them are a slog. Well, Union, yeah. Union Keys writes in and says, uh, it's Cliffhanger. Stephen Hayes says it's this cliffhanger or Deep Blue Sea. Deep mm-hmm. Blue Sea. Mm-hmm. Fresno Film Buff says it's Die Hard 2. And Schlock, Slo- Schlock Snob says, I don't know if it's his best per se. It would have been better if it was Schlock Knob. I don't know why. I don't know why. Schlock Schlob. Yeah, well, it could Schlock be Schlock Knob. Schlock, Schlock Snob <laughs> says, uh, I don't know if it's his best per se, but the movie of his I watch the most is Die Hard 2. Mm-hmm. And Johnny New Jersey strikes again saying Cliffhanger Hedrick. is one of the few action films I didn't see yeah. growing up and I've been kind of avoiding my whole life. Oh. With your divided opinions on it, I'm even more interested to see it now because we I share we? Yeah. all yeah, your yeah. movie choices. So I wonder on which side of the fence I'll fall on. Watch I, it. I feel it won't, I won't if like it. If nothing else, watch the opening. Watch it. Well, speaking of that. Uh, Basin Voorhees says, every what time up? I've watched this film, I can say I've only ever seen up to and a little after the scene where Stallone f- fails to rescue the girl. I can't mm-hmm. explain it. I guess subconsciously I lose interest after such a climactic scene. That's exactly you, what Colin and you're, I said. You're missing yeah. out Stallone puppy eyes at yeah. a certain point in this you movie. You can get that in every other Stallone movie. Uh, Especially I mean, over the top. I mean, true. he impaled someone on a stalactite. <laughs> Speaking Dude. of that. It is yeah. a stalactite. <laughs> it, is. it is because Robin so Lindemann come silver- from the top. Hey, wait, wait. As we learned. Uh, uh, it's in the mailbag. Oh. Robin Lineman <laughs> oh. Silverberg wrote you, in sir. and said stalactites hold tight to the ceiling yep. and stalagmites might grow to meet them. Well, oh, oh, you know That's, what? That'll work. I'll, that'll I'll actually works. remember right. it because all of I, that. All I have to remember is one. Stalactites yeah. come from the top, top. And, yeah. then and then I know the where one, stalagmites yeah. come from. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, Andrew John says we learned uh, something. Thank you. I did. <laughs> Thank you very much, Robin. Uh, we Andrew, learned something so you learned something. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. Mm-hmm. Andrew, I feel like they're usually smarter than us. So Andrew John says, I watched this again not too long ago. It's surprisingly enjoyable, and Michael Rooker's in it, so I have to love it. Yeah. And uh, HP sure. says, uh, I love this movie. It was, it was one me and my dad watched a lot when he was slowly introducing me to action films. One of those movies that I have great memories tied to it, and the movie actually holds up to. P.S. I can't watch Cliffhanger without thinking of Ace Ventura 2. Absolutely. Didn't Raccoon. you guys say that yes. on the episode? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Yep, yeah, we mentioned it. Amazing. Right, because both Sylvester Stallone and Jim Carrey feed baby birds from their own mouth, right? Yeah. Like that's, yes. That that's why they can't. Yeah. That yeah, happens okay. in both. That makes yep. sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Well. You just created a Venn diagram that never before existed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it does on the Saturday night for Chillin'. Yeah, Chilin. it does. Again, we'll connect the dots. You never thought we would. Yeah. So uh, now we're going to go around the room and tell you if we would recommend Lone Wolf and Cub Baby Cart in Peril, starting with... Colin! It's not no, tonight. Sean. It's not Starting with Sean. Sean. Ah. I, was looking at, I was looking at Colin. I was like, I have to yell Sean, but I was looking at Colin. Sorry. <laughs> Sean! <laughs> What did you think of Lone Wolf and Cub, Baby Cart, in Peril? Uh, I had, like I did with Shogun Assassin, I had a really good time watching this tonight. Uh, like I said with Shogun Assassin, uh, when we first watched it, like I'm going to run out and watch all of these. And I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody which on I, that show said I, would, I checked. They right. Had. Which I, I didn't. Has. But I still I get the same feeling where I'm just like, I'm going to watch more of these. Like, they're very enjoyable. I like the story. I like the, uh, I mean, I like all the actors in it. And it's just, it's, it's a fun watch. Like, the continuing saga of these characters is just, it's something I want to continue watching. Whether I have to have 
Colin make me sit down and watch them, which seems to be what I have to do. <laughs> but I enjoy being brought back to this three world. Three years from now. Three, yeah, three years from now, I'll watch another one. But uh, even if I do have to have someone bring me back to it, um, I do like watching these movies. I find them very entertaining. Um, you know, uh, the fighting, the choreography, the blood spraying, like, that's just fun. Like, I think they're fun movies, and uh, I enjoy the story, and I, I want to see where they go. Uh, even though, we're as we've kind of alluded to during these, maybe there's no, like, concrete conclusion we get from any of them. But it's fun to see them, like, come into battles with, you know, whatever bad guy's been set up for these movies and the overarching bad guy that we get and uh he's eye patch villain for the rest of the movie. So I kinda wanna see that as well. Um so yeah, I enjoyed I enjoy the hell out of this movie. It's just fun to see, you know, like fucking kid in a baby card hitting switches mm-hmm. and being like, let's kill some motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. So it's I mean it's fun and it's a good story. So yeah, I recommend the hell out of it. I think you should watch Baby Cart in Peril. Holly, what did you think? Um yeah, this like I said earlier, this was my first experience with the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought it was so much fun. Um, I, I kind of want to go back and and watch Shogun Assassin and and revisit these movies. Um, I thought it was it was entertaining as hell. Like, who doesn't love the fucking seventies blood sprays? Like that that just that's what you want out of these movies. You you want that ridiculousness. Um, and the fucking seventies funk music and the action scenes was just top notch. Mm-hmm. It was great. It totally pulled it all together for me. Like it's it gave me everything that I. I could want out of out of these kind of movies. It was just so much fun. Um, that kid was so fucking adorable. I couldn't stand it. I love it. Um, yeah, I think this movie is is fun as hell. I I, th- I hope all the other movies are just as fun. Um, for sure. I I don't like. I don't really. I, I can't think of any reason not to re- not to recommend Lone Wolf and Cub, Baby Cart and Peril. It was great. Michaela. Uh, This movie had some really cool moments throughout, but I felt like the time in between those moments was too long at times. Um, This movie felt like a lot longer than it was. And maybe I'm just... How long was it? It was like an hour and a half. Felt longer than that. Um, It did have some slow... Yeah. And I get it's the fourth movie in a series of six. And I've seen Shogun Assassin before, which is kind of an unfair comparison because it is this like editing together of these two movies. Right. But it's still the same characters in the same story. So like... And that movie I enjoyed so much more and I feel like has a lot more going for it. It has a lot more cooler um, action sequences and set pieces. It's more crazy characters. Yeah. It's got... I just feel like as a whole, as a movie, that movie has a lot more going for it than this one does. So I don't think I would recommend this one just because I feel like if you're going to get into this franchise, this is not where you should start. Well, yeah. I think you should... (laughs) Right. Right. I think you watch Shogun Assassin. If you like that, then maybe make the commitment to watch the other six. But, you know, I think Shogun Assassin is a good, like, dipping your feet in the water kind of movie. And I, I really enjoyed that. And, like, this is not my genre. This is not my thing. This is not something I know a lot about. So I can't, I mean, my opinion might mean nothing about this, but like, it's just not something I know a lot about. It's, I just have and barely any knowledge, but I really enjoyed Shogun Assassin the first time I saw it. I, I liked like a couple of scenes in that movie I talked about really stick in my head, like the kid in the well and like the first time you see the swords come out of the baby cart or fucking crazy and shit mm-hmm. like that. I didn't feel like there was any scenes in this movie that I was like, oh, shit, I didn't expect that. Like, maybe the guns coming out of the baby cart. But like I said, you never actually see guns. You just, bullets just come out of it. Like, But the fact that it is uh, like a machine gun, it's like, what? Yeah. what? But at that the point, hell? it's like game over, you know? Like, that, t- that sucks all the air out of the room at that point because, like, if you have guns against swords, obviously you're going to win, you know? And, like, other people had guns in this movie, too. And it's right. just, like, once you introduce guns, it's a whole different genre, you know? Yeah, we get to, we did get to a point where just like, oh, we just shot him. Like, yeah. It feels like a little There's cheating. There's no drama to that, you yeah. know? I um, want more so sword I, battles. This movie was not what I had hoped it would be, so I don't think I would recommend it based on that. Colin. Um, well, I, I mean, I agree with what Michaela said. Is this probably isn't where you should start? So sorry, mm-hmm. Holly. Uh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I do think that. Uh, Shogun- but I also, but I also, you have to remember, I have no basis of comparison. I haven't That's seen Shogun true. Assassin. Yeah, so, 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 so you're in a different me, position. Than so to I me, am, I was yeah. like, yeah, this is awesome. Now I'll probably watch Shogun Assassin and be like, oh well, yeah, this is way better. Yeah, <laughs> you should definitely watch. Shogun well, Assassin. because <laughs> Shogun Assassin is made up primarily. I think it, the best I parts. Before, of- it, well, Baby Cart. It's uh, a highlight the, reel. The you know? River Sticks yeah. is probably the best movie. Right. Mm-hmm. So since Shogun Assassin is mostly that movie, it's you know. Um, I think Shogun Assassin works as probably it's like the most awesome 
way that you, I mean, that's the way that I found out about this series, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I'd heard about before they were calling it the lone wolf and cub series, everybody would refer to it as the baby cart series. Mm. And I'm like, huh, that doesn't sound all that awesome. <laughs> you know, little did you know, and the titles, you know, are not, it's like the, I think this one was released as Shogun assassin three or Shogun assassin four, uh, slashing blades of carnage. Right, sounds which, awesome. sounds, which also sounds great. It sounds cooler than Baby Card in Peril. Um, but uh, so I mean, my exposure was through Shogun Assassin, which I'm trying to think now. Did I see that before or after Kill Bill? Because Shogun Assassin must have played a uh, you know a heavy influence on Quentin Tarantino if, because it had to have. at the end of Kill Bill. Uh, Bill is sitting with um, Uma Thurman's kid, and they're watching Shogun Assassin, because you can hear it. You hear Daigoro, the American one, talking. So that is what they're watching on TV. And a lot of, uh, you know, that movie seems like, you know, obviously it's inspired by Japanese sword play movies and, you know, arterial sprays and all this other stuff, which I think comes from uh, either this series of films, because like I said, the Zatoichi movies don't have that, or it comes from the films of uh, the director, was it Kenji Musimi? Because I think he also did, and now I want to see it, uh, Lady Snowblood. You ever heard of these series? Yeah, that movie's really good. I like You've that seen one. it? Yeah. I, I think have it's from. It. Do you? You I want need to borrow, borrow it? Yeah. Because yeah. so I, I was like, I was actually yeah. like trying to, like, how can I find this movie? It's and it just wasn't a great title, Lady yeah. yeah. Snowblood. Yeah, Lady Snowblood. I think there's two of them. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think both of them are in the I have the criterion. Yeah, it's got both of them. I think okay. both yeah, of them. Yeah, I was actually like going like, to like pick this up. Like Lady Vengeance and all that stuff. Like yeah. you give it that title, I'm just like, all right, I'm down. I want to see that. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Yeah, because it doesn't. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Then, but a lot of the uh, Oren Ishi stuff in Kill Bill, like toward the end, their yep. fights. Does the music the come from? If I remember correctly, yes. The yeah, Zamfir it's the same pan music. Flute stuff yeah. and all that. Yeah, because I remember like a friend of mine had this movie. He's like, you gotta watch it. And he was like, I watched this movie and now I hate Tarantino. He's like, because he took everything from this <laughs> fucking movie. And like, I mean, I was in like high school the first time I saw it, but I remember being like, wow. Like, that was my moment of, like, wow, there are filmmakers out there that literally just lift shit and think we will never find out, mm. even in the age of the internet. Like, so, yes, the the music, the choreography, it's, like, straight up. Okay, well, I want to, yeah, if mm-hmm. I can borrow that. Yeah, I definitely, sure. I am on a kick, because I did these in, like, a week, you know, watched all six mm-hmm. movies. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess I would say if you are, if you are a, a newcomer to it, I think you should check out probably Shogun Assassin but if if you have a taste for it after that then I think you should go back and watch the first uh, movie sort of and just watch the series because it is kind of like a continuing episodic you know it's like a TV show done in an hour and a half on the big screen I mean they're cinematic you know in their film language which I like you know it's like they yeah. feel like real movies um I think to me like the Star Trek movies every second one <laughs> the odd numbered ones were right, my favorite. The best, yeah, yeah. I like the second one, the fourth one, which was this one, and then yeah. the last one, and then the the third one was like that's a pretty decent movie. And the only one I really didn't necessarily care for was the fifth one, which is Baby Cart in the Land of Demons. Um, and I think I is because I like it when there's more um, of the show offy, you know, blood spraying grindhouse mentality, mm. you know. And I mean, this one had a bunch of nudity too. I mean, some of them do, but you know, it's like this is an exploitation <laughs> movie. It's not like a high art Akira Kurosawa film, mm. you know. It's like more of a trashy, you know, more fun kind mm-hmm. of in some we ways. We started out with boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. They know who yeah. they, that they're playing to an audience, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I would definitely, I would recommend this movie, but I mean, I guess what I'm saying is I would recommend the series. Uh, so yeah, you should check out Lone Wolf and Cub. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So next week. We're going to be watching a movie that's I got it. chosen by <laughs> Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what are we watching next week? Oh, this is our first Halloween pick. Or what's the show is. On Halloween. Uh, we're going to watch 1986's Slaughter High. Slaughter oh, High. Right. Going back to high right, school. Yeah. Yep, going back to high school, going back to kids getting slaughtered. Kids, I use in quotations, and you'll find out why. Right, you'll years. find out why next yeah. week. <laughs> is this a Vestron picture? Yes, movie? it is. Okay. I was wondering, like, because I'm like, do I? I don't know if I know Slaughter High. Oh. You may be bringing one in. Oh, I know Slaughter that High. That I haven't seen. Really? Oh, wow. shit. Oh, shit. All right. So really? You don't I know this one? For- 
I, I've never. Oh, seen let's it. find out next week. I've never seen think it. Think so. Does it have like a? Oh. a is there a skull with like a, uh, a graduation cap on the cover? Right, and he's holding an apple and shit. Okay, so I've seen the cover. Okay. Sure, you've seen the cover because uh, probably when they when Vestron was like, we're redoing this. Yeah, but it's uh, there's a lot of. Unique things about this movie. Harry Manfredini did the score for this movie. Excellent. Uh, we'll good? talk about that <laughs> next week. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, so, uh, I so like, yes. Friday the 13th, what else has he done that was good? We'll next, find week. Out. next week. Next week. <laughs> next week. Next week. Next week. All right. So that's uh, next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll tune in for our month of horrors. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Can't speak for everybody. No, uh, you, you can. Okay. It's the Freak Show. It's, it's going to be horrific yeah. in one way or yeah. another. Yeah. So.